I want to talk to you today from a very simple thought, something that um, our parents uh, have said to us, uh, a word in this title here, responsibility. And I want to talk to you from the thought, you can't run from responsibility. You can't run from responsibility. Have you ever tried to run from responsibility? Just, just think about yourself now. Have you ever tried to run from it? Well, question, where did you go? What responsibility are you running from today because of how you feel or what you think? What are you putting off or refusing to do? Question here. Has God asked you to do something you don't want to do? Has God asked you to do something? Just think about you and your relationship with God. Has he asked you to do something you didn't want to do? Now, if you're not doing what God wants you to do, the question is, what are you doing? If you're not doing what God wants you to do, if we are not doing what God wants us to do, what are we doing? Well, we're doing what we want to do. Yeah, we're doing what we want to do. The story of Jonah and our lesson is going to come from Jonah. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. And we want you to consider all the times that you have considered the book of Jonah, and whatever is read, we focus more on the great fish. We hear a lot about the great fish. Yes, the great fish. We focus more on the great fish that God prepared, that God prepared, we focus more on that than the attitude of the prophet Jonah. When God prepares something, ladies and gentlemen, he already knows the end. When God prepares something, Anything that God prepares, he already knows the end. He knows what's going to occur in the middle. That's why, that's why, ladies and gentlemen, that he allows you and I to start what he's already finished. And we look at this through Isaiah 46, starting at verse 9. He says, remember the former things of old, God says. For I am God, and there is no other. Can I get an amen on that? Right? There is no other. All right? I am God, and there is none like me, he says. None like me. He says this here, verse 10, declaring the end. He declares the end from the beginning. All right? See, that, that means that. See, we start from the beginning to the end. That's what we do. God starts from the end. Then he uh, gives us that opportunity. Y'all start what I've already finished. Now, he's included everything that we would do in between in that. So he's not surprised about anything that goes on. He says, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things that are not yet done. Now, he's declaring them from ancient times. Things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel, my counsel shall stand. And God says, I will do my pleasure. 
He says his counsel will stand. He's going to do his pleasure. He may not do what Tony wants him to do. What Tony wants him to do may not be his pleasure. What Tony wants him to do may not be best for Tony. But God has already considered it all. And he says he does his pleasure when it comes to what he wants to see done. See, God prepares for what he orders, ladies and gentlemen. So let me call your attention to Jonah, all right? Chapter 1. Look at what the Word of God says. It says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittia, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city. He says, Jonah, and I want you to cry out when you go there. I want you to warn them of the impending uh, 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 things that are going to occur. I want you to warn them. Say, so cry out against it. Why, God? For their wickedness. Nineveh's wickedness has come up before me. Nineveh's wickedness had gotten so, they had gotten so entrenched in how they were living, that God said, it has come up to me, it's so bad. Can't be ignored. When we think about today's society and what we're dealing with, outside of these doors, we are dealing with a Ninevite attitude, a mindset of wickedness in this world. And where is this wickedness coming from? It's coming from the people. It's coming from you and I. Yes, we in Christ. But some of us got some wicked mindsets. Truth be told. Now, do you want to go to truth, or do you want me to talk to you about how holy you are? Huh? I can do that too, but I wouldn't be telling the truth. Because sometimes my mind, Lord have mercy, Jesus, every day of the week, I want to get somebody. But I have to talk to Tony. I have to allow the Holy Spirit to talk to Tony. It says that the word of the Lord came to Jonah. So imagine someone walking up to you. This is how the word of the Lord, it came to Jonah. It walked up to Jonah. It presented itself to Jonah. And it shared with Jonah what God wanted him to do because Jonah was God's prophet. God's word has come to you too. Yes, it's come to you too. And God has shared some things with you. He's told you to arise. Some of us are still sitting down. Ah, Lord, we ain't going nowhere. We still sitting there saying, Lord, help me. Yeah, Lord said, I want you to help me. And not just me, I want you to help other people. Look at what he says here. He says, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city. He says, I want you to cry out. I want you to proclaim some things. For their wickedness has come up before me. The word of God says, but Jonah. Lord have mercy, Jesus. We can put all of our names there. But Jonah arose. He got up. He arose to flee. See, to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. The Bible says he went down to Joppa. And just think about the number of times as we deal with this book of Jonah, how many times you hear down. He went down to Joppa and he found a ship. He found a ship going to Tarsus. So he paid the fare. Jonah's disobedience cost him. He paid the fare. He paid the fare and he went down into it. He says to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Are you running from God today? See, you can't run from responsibility. God gave Jonah something to do that aligned with who Jonah was. He was God's prophet. You and I are God's children, and he shared with us something to do. You can't run from responsibility, ladies and gentlemen. You can't run from the presence of the Lord. How long?
long you been running? See, Jonah, like many of us at times, you see, he didn't want to do what God asked. Like many of us, he went in the other direction, thinking he could run from responsibility. Responsibility is something we can't run from, ladies and gentlemen. Look how many years you've been trying to do it. Think about it now. Think about it for a few minutes. Some of you have been running from responsibility so long, you're tired. And you're always like, man, I'm so tired. Man, I can't hardly make it. You're on the run. Got your shoes laced up. Got your Air Force Ones on. Yeah, got your Jordans on. Yeah, your New Balance, your Adidas, and you bailing. Yeah, you're bailing from the Lord. Since Jonah was a prophet of God, and as far as Scripture is concerned, when you really consider all the individuals that God called, many of them didn't want to go but Jonah ran from God. Many of them gave excuses, but Jonah ran from God. Are you running from God? Just think about your life. Look around at nobody else, because this is about me and you. Are you running from God? Could that be the reason that your life is in the turmoil you think it's in? God saying, go this way. I got everything squared away for you. And because you don't want to deal with him, her, uh, or, 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 or something else, you go that way. Still asking God to do for you in your disobedience. And we expect our holy God to, to, to operate in disobedience and sin. That will never happen. That will never happen. Why is God doing this to me? You running. In the other direction. It ain't God, it's you. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You see, God called Jonah to be his prophet, not what Jonah wanted to be. And God gave Jonah a responsibility. Just like God chose you before the foundation of the world. He called you. He called you before you even entered your mother's womb, before your parents even got together. God had already called you. I'm talking about God now. He had already and, and had plans for your life. Mm, 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 mm. You see, it was Jonah's duty, his responsibility, that God called him. He had a responsibility. When God commanded Jonah to preach in Nineveh, Jonah just didn't run, ladies and gentlemen. He, he just didn't run. And as I look more at this, he didn't just run away, but he went as far as possible in the opposite direction. He went as far as possible in the opposite direction. Nineveh was 550 miles northeast of Israel. But he, Jonah, headed to Tarsus. Tarsus is located on the coast of Spain, some 2,500 hundred miles to the west. This dude went as far as he could possibly go. How far have you run from God? How much are you willing to pay? Jonah paid a fare to become irresponsible. See, when you're not responsible, the only thing you can be is irresponsible. Either you ain't made a mistake, you irresponsible. You didn't forget, you irresponsible. You know the light bill's due on the 15th, but you go buy a dress, some shoes, a car, a watch, a ring on the 10th. Lights cut out. Lord, help me. Lord, you know I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. No, you're not. That's why the light's out. You're not being responsible. There are many lessons that we can learn from the story of Jonah. And the biggest question is, how far have you run from the responsibility that God has placed on you? 
each one under the sound of my voice today, God has given you something he wants you to do. And no one else can do that but you. What is it that God has given you to do, gifted you to do, planted you to do, but you decided, I'm going in the opposite direction. That's not what I want to do, God. I know better. See, uh, Tony got a better idea. If we did it this way, this is what would happen. And I think this will work better for me, God. These are the kind of conversations we have with the Lord. And because we uh, might lie prostrate in the floor, we might get on our knees, we might cry, we really think we've been holy about it. And you're praying in disobedience. You're asking God to do something that he ain't going to do. God's only going to do what's right. He's only going to do his plan. He's only going to work his plan because his plan works best for you. We tried our plans. I've had many plans to fail thinking that I knew better than God. All right, now. Walk with me here. Jonah got comfortable in his disobedience, ladies and gentlemen. Is your effort, think about this, is your effort to run from God or in your effort to run from God? Have you ran into something? Look at verses 4 and 5 in Jonah. Look at what the Word of God says. It says, but the Lord, now Jonah has bailed. He's on the run. Paid the fare, see, on his way to Tarsus. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea. And there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. Verse 5 says, Then the mariners were afraid. And every man cried out to his God and threw the cargo that was in the ship, the same ship that Jonah's on, into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down, there's that word again, into the lowest part of the ship and had laid down and was fast asleep. We can become so comfortable in our disobedience that we convince ourselves we right. We are concerned about what's going on up top. Jonah was not concerned about them other people on that ship. Only thing Jonah was, I am not going to Nineveh. I am not going to do what God wants me to do. I'm going to take this ship, I'm going to pay the fare, and I'm out of here. He put so many other people's lives in jeopardy. In your disobedience, how many others' lives are you putting in jeopardy? In your disobedience to raise your children right, you're putting the world in jeopardy. Yes, Lord, in your disobedience, going to the workplace, not doing what you're supposed to do, you're putting your job in jeopardy. Don't get comfortable in your irresponsible behavior. You can't run from Responsibility, ladies and gentlemen. Jonah ran into a great wind on the sea, and it's the wind that the Lord sent. This tells you we're talking about the Creator God. Yeah, Jonah wouldn't listen, but the great wind listened to God. God created Jonah, God created the great wind. Jonah didn't listen. Man won't listen, but nature, God sent it, and the wind went. And can you grasp that, ladies and gentlemen? He's talking to nature. And he's telling nature, yeah, I need you to shake some things up for me. I got a man on the run. I got a man on the run. And he says there was a mighty tempest. There was a mighty tempest. Jonah ran into a great wind on the sea where there was a mighty tempest on the sea. Jonah ran into a whirlwind, ladies and gentlemen, a heavy storm of rain, an overflow of wind and rain. This was unlike what the uh, 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 gentleman would normally see on the sea. 
Why? Because this was like a wind that God just hurled at him like you throw a baseball. Hurled it at him. Shake some things up. I've got to get Jonah's attention because I got work for him to do in Nineveh. God has work for you all to do, for me to do. And if we don't do it, God will shake things up. The reason that things aren't going the way that you want them to go in your life is because you're running from responsibility and God will not allow it to happen and he'll shake it up. He'll shake it up. Think about what's going on in your life right now. You don't really know why or put it this way. You know you're in your disobedience, but you don't know that God is so involved with your life and he wants you to do what he wants you to do because he has a plan and you're the only one he's sending to do it. He'll shake it up. He'll shake it up, ladies and gentlemen. Anybody here ever been shook? Had your life been shook? You know it was the Lord shaking you. Lord have mercy. God pays and has paid for what he's ordered with the blood of Jesus Christ. God's going to get what, he's, what he ordered. He's going to get it. Are you coming in one way or the other? Yeah, yeah, yes, there's no doubt about, no doubt about that one. Now, these individuals start throwing stuff overboard. But throwing the cargo overboard wasn't the problem. The cargo wasn't the issue. The one down that down at the bottom chilling, that was the issue. And he was fast asleep. See, they need the cargo. They didn't need Jonah. Yeah, they, 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 they didn't need Jonah. They could have done without him. Look, 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 at, look at verse 6. It says, so the captain came to Jonah. And he said to him, what do you mean, sleeper? He says, arise. Didn't God tell him to arise? Now, the captain of the ship says, arise. Call on your God, because we call it on ours. Perhaps your God will consider us, because ours isn't, so that we may not perish. And they said to one another, listen, come, let us cast lots. Let us cast lots. So let, let us cast lots. We may know, see, that we may know for what cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots. You know, casting lots is like put rocks or straws. They, they, they would use them and throw them out. And we really don't know uh, 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 the meaning or, or, or how things worked out with casting lots. But in this particular situation, God directed everything back to Jonah. Look at what he says. He says, then they said to him, oh, the lot fell on Jonah. So they cast lots, the lot fell. Then they said to him, please tell us, for what cause is this trouble upon us? Question number one. What is your occupation? Question number two. And where do you come from? Question number three. What is your country? Question number four. And a what? People are you. Question number five, man, what's going on? The light fell on you. You down here sleeping. We throwing the cargo over. Man, the, 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 the great wind is a tempest. Man, it's a mighty tempest. And you down here chilling. Man, what's going on? We got so many questions to ask you, brother. You better start telling us something. Because our God ain't telling us nothing. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Y'all walking with me? Look at what he says here now. He says, so he said to them, Jonah speaks out now. I am a Hebrew. I fear the Lord God of heaven. Check out what he says. Who made the sea and the dry land. Jonah realized at this particular point, no matter how far he went, God was already there. No matter where you run, God is already there. So you're running right into him. So why not just do what he asked you to do now? If you don't want to do it, have a little talk with him. God has no problem telling with you or me, telling him, God, I don't feel like doing that. God, I don't want to do that. You're having a conversation with God. 
See, now God can take the time to talk to you. See, this is in your prayer to him. See, prayer is not all about just, you know, uh, lying prostrate or getting on your knees. And all. Prayer is how we communicate with our God. We communicate with him in prayer, ladies and gentlemen. And all that Jonah had to do initially was to do what God asked him to do. At this particular time, Jonah realized, I, I can't run from him. See, no matter where you go, ladies and gentlemen, we can't run from responsibility. You're going to do what God wants you to do. You can't run from him. And if you're running today, stop. Stop. Stop running from God. Didn't say stop running. Stop running from God and run to him. Use the same momentum that you're allowing to take you in the opposite direction to take you in the right direction. Because God is waiting for a people who will listen to him so he can change the world. Responsibility, ladies and gentlemen, when you really consider uh, the life you live today, and all that you desire to do in this life. This life calls for responsible people. And God's great idea was to have a kingdom of responsible people who would rule the earth, because he got heaven. And here, in sending Jonah to do what he wanted Jonah to do, because of the call on Jonah's life, he was a prophet, God's prophet. You're God's children. And God called Jonah to do something. He wanted him to go to Nineveh to cry out against this wicked place. Jonah didn't want to go. And as we continue to look at Jonah, we will see ourselves there. And we will be able to uh, have a better understanding of ourselves and our relationship with God and being totally truthful with ourselves versus fooling or lying to ourselves. Telling ourselves we want to serve God, but when the opportunity to serve comes, it's God, that's not what I want to do though. Now God, I, I, hey God, I, I don't want to do this, but I can do this. God knows what you can do. He created you. He gave you the ability to do whatever he commands you to do. You have it. You might not believe it, but he know he's given it to you. And once we pay attention to him, he will teach you how to use it. You, you, you follow me? Responsibility, you can't run from it. This week, take the time to embrace responsibility. Run towards a resp responsibility. And I promise you, when you do that, responsibility will open her arms if we were to personify responsibility. She would open her arms and embrace you. She would receive you. And through Christ Jesus, by the power of his Holy Spirit, she will reward you. You can't run from responsibility. It is waiting to be taken advantage of. Responsibility is one of the very few things in the entire world that desires for you to take advantage of it. Y'all follow me? So this week as we go out, we might not want to take responsibility for this, but take it anyway. Because as you go through that door, she's going to receive you and there's going to be a reward for you. God bless you this morning. May heaven continue to smile upon you. May you continue to keep on keeping on. God has some great things in store for you. If there's anyone today who is out of the ark of safety, you know today is the day that, 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 that you need to give your life to the Lord. Well, just do so now by asking him to forgive you for, of your sins. Let him know that you accept his son Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then invite him into your life and say, God, Whatever it is that you want me to do, here I am. 
you know, send me, teach me how to live this life you have given to me. If you have said those words in silence, just sitting there, then you are in the family of God. And God will begin to speak to you by the power of his Holy Spirit. Lead God and direct you.